dear students in earlier classes we used to tell about uh, the uh, feet in which we discussed about the uh, all the three rasts then lujas mat then carnal bunt then common bunt then foliar blight and then uh, yellow ear rot or tundu disease of feet so one disease of feet was left which was powdery mildew so today we will discuss about the powdery mildew disease in wheat then we will cover the lentil crop also then peach and turmeric in lentil basically we will discuss two diseases that is lentil rust and wilt of lentil and peach in peach we used to do deal about the peach leaf curl and the leaf spot of turmeric so one by one we are dealing with the disease of feet that is powdery mildew of feet so basically powdery mildew is not a major problem in, in the jharkhand state but uh, it has the academic importance so it the pathogen the causal organism is erysifi graministritisi and the powdery mildew can be easily diagnosed by white powdery patches that form on the upper surface of the leaves and stems the grayish white powdery growth appears on the leaf sheath stem and floral parts the powdery growth later becomes black lesion and cause drying of leaves and other parts so the fungus uh, you all know the, that is the erysiphe the escomycetes fungus and it is basically obligate parasite so the fungus uh, how does it survive the question arises so the fungus remains in high hills during summers in in infected plant debris as dormant mycelium and sci the primary spread is by seo spores and secondary spread is through airborne conidia the favorable conditions for the development of the disease are the the disease infects plant during the period of high humidity not necessarily rain cool to moderate temperature that is 20 to 21 degree centigrade so uh, while go to the uh, about the fungus it is the powdery mildew fungus erysiphe erysiphe is uh, you can identify the clistothecia so uh, clistothecia is completely closed ascocar and uh, the mycelioid appendages here you can you can find the mycelioid appendages it is basically the distinguishing character of the genera erysiphe while in other it is sarsinoid in other it is dicotomously branched so it, we are concerned with erysiphe and erysa in case of erysiphe it is it is mycelioid appendages which is which is the diagnostic feature of the clistothecial appendages of the erysiphe genera now you can you can manage the disease and uh, the disease severity is more in some pockets and most of the present variety do not have adequate resistance so so grow resistant uh, variety of the disease uh, like wh542 and sd2329 and you can manage the disease by by spray of the chemicals and uh, one chemical uh, that is triadimethon mm -hmm. uh, sold in the market in the name of belitone and you can use 200 g belitone in 300 liters of water per acre so uh, spraying with kerathene uh, that is uh, at the rate of 0.1% has been found beneficial also so earlier uh, i discussed about the the symptoms of the disease and you can see the the gray to white to gray powdery uh, mass on the leaf surface and in 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 the in the infected uh, severely infected cases you can you can have the that symptom on the and on the stems and uh, on the inflorescence also so this is all about your powdery mildew diseases now earlier as told to you that uh, in lentil we will discussing we will be discussing on two diseases that is uh, rust of lentil and wilt uh, of lentil so rust is basically 
rust is caused by in lentil by Euromyces phalli and this disease was first reported by a, by Butler in the year 1980 from India on lentil, pea, sweet pea and broad bean from the Indo-Gangetic plains. In India, severe outbreak of lentil rust was reported from Delhi during 1945 to 47 by Prasad and Burma. Uh, now you can observe the Pycnea and Asia of the Euromyces phoebe. You all know that Euromyces phoebe is, a is an autosseous rust and the, it has Pycnea and Asia on lentil leaves and a stem in the month of February. The earliest symptoms of the rust of lentil were characterized by the development of Asia in February or even later. ACL formation was preceded by silent yellowing which gradually turned brown. The ACI appeared as a spot either singly or in round or elongated clusters. The redosori were formed on both leaves surface. They could be seen on stems, petioles and even on pods. The tilotosori were dark brown to almost black in color, smaller in size and found often on the stem. So, so you can you can visualize with us. This one is the erodosori spot. This one is the TVO spot and this one is the ACU spores. So, so this one is the symptomatic view of the crop of lentil showing the rust disease. The rust has the, now the disease should have the predisposing factor of the conducive environment that uh, is conducive for the disease development. So, infection of the host SEO4 was reported to occur at relatively low temperature that is uh, 70 to 22 degrees uh, centigrade and the infection came to halt, uh, halt at 30 degrees centigrade. High humidity, cloudy weather with uh, cloudy with drizzling weather with 20 to 22 degrees centigrade temperature was found to be favorable for disease development and there was no infection above 30 degree centigrade. You can manage the disease the, uh, rust through the foliar spray of propiconazole uh, at the rate of 0.1%. Uh, the propiconazole that is still 25 EC, so propiconazole is sold in the market in the name of tilt 25 EC and it is most effective on the site for the control of uh, rust. Uh, now you can have uh, the resistant varieties also and uh, in that you can have the varieties like uh, VL531, PL554, PL579, PANTL406, DPL Basat. These varieties should be grown and you see that uh, these variety does not have any rust reaction. Or if have, you can see the resistant reactions only. One more thing that uh, you, if you delay the is showing by 15 days from the normal one, the disease can be escaped. Though you can you can also also apply the biocontrol agents like trichoderma and pseudomonas, but it has limited success. Um, I mean to say that uh, that the disease uh, uh, control is less in case of in case of biocontrol agents. Uh, the next disease is wilt of lentil. Uh, this one is caused by uh, Fusarium oxyosporum pharma species lentis and this one is the most uh, significant and serious disease uh, uh, that, which is a soil born in nature and it causes yield loss up to 50% in farmers. The disease uh, pathogen thrives at temperature 22 to 25 degree centigrade with warm and dry soil conditions and affects lentil seedling at early stage and at the reproductive stage. It, if it affects in early stage, we can, we can call it early wilting and while in uh, reproductive stage that is flowering to podding stage, uh, pod filling stage, then it is, it is termed as late, late wilting. The pathogen can survive in soil as chlamydoespore. So, so you can, uh, you can have the idea about the fusarium, it produces uh, pro microconidia, macro macroconidia and chlamydoespores. So the pathogen can survive in soil as chlamydoespores 
which can remain viable for many years. The spores can be easily spread in water. So pathogen infects the host. Uh, so the, what, what is the mechanism? So the pathogen can infect the host roots by entering the roots and grows in the plant xylem and prevents the transport of water and nutrients to plant and causes wilting. So uh, uh, this is one is the cause of the wilting. And now regarding the symptoms, the wilt appears in the field as patches at both seedling and adult stages. So um, almost all the soil bond diseases you can find will appear in patches in the field. So it is the characteristic feature. Now, now if it appears in patches, it it uh, will appear both in case of early wilting and late wilting also. So in early wilting, it is characterized by the sudden drying and drooping of the leaves and sudden uh, and seedling death. While late wilting happens from flowering to pot filling stage, and here the sudden drooping of top leaflets and dull green foliage. Followed by wilting of the whole plant. You can see the symptom of the uh, wilted plant. Uh, it is clear from the figure also. So this one is the the, the heavily infected uh, plot, and the plant view and field view also. Now uh, earlier I have discussed about the pathogen that is, it is Fusarium oxysporum parmaspecies lentis. So basically, it is uh, the fungus which is highline. The mycelium highlines, septate, much branched, and in the culture medium, the growth pattern is fluffy to abreast, uh, uh, vary in color from no color to pink, and it possesses three kinds of conidia that is, microconidia, which is sickle sept, then uh, macroconidia, macro which is sickle sept, microconidia, and chlamydiospores. Chlamydiospores may be, may be apical. Uh, or intercalary. As for all soil bond diseases, you can manage the wilt also, like uh, having some of the clear cut instructions to the uh, in your mind. That is, field sanitation and clean cultivation should be followed. Then crop rotation of three to four years should be followed. Then seed treatment with uh, tebuconazole, since babesteen is likely to be prohibited uh, from the uh, December. Uh, this month. So, in case of uh, carbendazine, uh, uh, treat the seed with uh, tebu tebuconazole that is, is sold in the name uh, of follicle in the market at the rate of 0.1 percent that is 1 ml per kg seed should be followed. Then uh, growing of resistant or tolerant varieties like uh, PL269, L4147, Nuri, Seri, VL507, PL639, PL8, Panth L8 and PL406, PL279 uh, uh, and PL, IPL342 and IPL344 should be grown. So these resistance variety, resistant varieties will give you uh, to harvest bumper crop. And one more thing, the application of uh, zinc and manganese salt uh, at the rate of 80 ppm in pre-soaked seeds has shown promising result. It means, it means if you apply the zinc and magnesium salt at, uh, at 80 ppm uh, to the pre-soaking, pre-soaked seed, the chances of uh, getting the infection will be minimum. And delayed sowing after July usually lowers the wilt incidence. So in case of soil bound diseases, the biocontrol agents are effective. So you can utilize trichoderma, pseudomonas, then streptomyces, which have the antagonistic effect against against uh, fusarium wilt. So, so application of the uh, trichoderma is an important uh, aspect. You can treat the seed also uh, with uh, with biocontrol agent like trichoderma, uh, and uh, you can apply the trichoderma in soil also. So, soil, you can apply trichoderma uh, to the soil by enriching it in, with uh, FIM. So, uh, how do we enrich it with FIM? So, you, you take uh, one quintal of uh, F, well rotten FIM and mix uh, 2.5 kg trichoderma powder uh, in, in a shade and uh, maintaining the proper moisture and give uh, 
give six to seven turns after three days. That is, uh, after seven turns, that is, after 21 days, it will be it will be ready for application in the field. And and you can apply the in this soil at the rate of five quintal pre-colonized FYM with trichoderma uh, in furrow or in row uh, per hectare. So this one is the application practice. So this is more uh, all about your wheel disease in, in lentil. Now the other disease is, is the leaf spot disease which, uh, of turmeric which is caused by tephrina. Tephrina maculens. The pathogen is tephrina uh, maculens. It causes considerable damage to turmeric in growing areas of northern India, Gujarat and Tamil Nadu. It appeared in the epidemic form in Orissa and Andhra Pradesh and uh, the conducive conditions are if the rains occurs during August September, the, it results in 100% attack by the pathogen in many areas. So regarding symptoms, you can see that the, the large number of spots develops on both leaf surfaces though more prominent on the upper surface also known as adaxial surface while lower surface is known as avaxial surface. So attacked leaves turn reddish brown in appearance which become yellow much sooner. The spots are usually small 1 to 2 mm in diameter. In severe attacks the spots are large irregular in shape coalescing with each other forming large patches and causing the drying of entire lamina. So this one is about the symptoms of the, the leaf spot and the disease cycle. You all know that, uh, yet uh, till now the precise mode of, uh, mode of transmission of the fungus is not known. Uh, the mycelium reaches the rhizome to lie dormant. Next season when the seed pieces are sown, it appears uh, that the dried leaves bearing the spots lie in the field with SI are chief sources of infection in the nest crop. Now, how we can manage the disease? We can manage the disease by maintaining the field sanitation, then growing the resistant cultivar like Javeli, China, CS69 and Sila. You can, if you grow, you can manage the disease. The recent tolerant variety like Rajendra Sonia, Rio de Janeiro should also be used. Now, uh, the, if you, the symptoms appear in the field, you can spray the, the, with chemicals like Blytox 50 at the rate of 0.3% or Vodex mixture uh, which can you prepare by yourself at the rate of 1%. And it, it, the, it, this chemical is effective in managing the disease of leaf as part of term. Next disease is peach leaf curl. So, so, you know that uh, earlier I told you about the leaf spot of turmeric, which is also caused by tephrina, uh, but the species is maculens. Here the F uh, species is deformance. So, the in, uh, from the species level it differs, but the symptoms is entirely different. So, so we will discuss. Now, the disease uh, is prevalent in the uh, northern Indian region that is hilly region, Kumau, Kullu and other parts of some Himalayan range of India. The absence of definite fruiting body, actually, actually Tephrina produces uh, uh, naked spores. So, so uh, naked spores. Okay, so the SI are naked. So, the absence of definite fruiting body, the SI are produced in naked layer on host surface Host pathogen interaction results in increased growth of the cell on upper surface of the leaf. A layer of hyphae develops beneath the cuticle of deformed leaves. This layer produces a large number of escogenous cells which grow vertically rupturing the epidermis. They ultimately develop into naked SI which appear more like exposed terminals of the hyphae than usual clavid cells. That is typical of the SI. The symptoms will appear early in the spring, soon after leaves are well out of bud, some of them appear twisted, thickened, puckered, curled downward and are greatly distorted. In some leaves, only a part of lamina may be affected. 
but more of an entire leaf is malformed. The leaves are fleshy and thicker than normal one. In the beginning, affected leaves uh, show pale green, but finally they change to reddish purple tint. The reddish velvety surface of lamina becomes covered with whitish bloom, which represents the fungal fructification. You will see this, all this in the photographs. Then affected leaves fall off early. In case of heavy infection, tree may suffer badly from premature defoliation in the late spring leading to the small fruit or fruit may drop also. You can see the symptom. The, uh, see the, it ruptures the epidermis and so purple reddish stain which later on becomes uh, and it, it uh, the leaves so velvety appearance also. So this one is the characteristic feature of the peach leaf curl. Now this cycle exports uh, basically exports persist during the winter on twigs, buds, scales which serve as the primary source of inoculum and you can manage the disease by a spray of copper oxychloride 0.25 to 0.3 percent. One more chemical, chlorothanolil, which is sold in the name of Kavach in market at the rate of 0.2 percent has been reported as an effective alternative to copper oxychloride. So with this, with this, uh, the five diseases which uh, I have discussed today uh, on lentil, then turmeric, then pea, then uh, turmeric, lentil, then wheat uh, will have been already discussed. With this, we close the chapter. Thank you for.